Okay guys, um, Bruce here, Targeted Wealth Creation, and I wanted to go over, let me do coin first and then Misty, or coin, um, Coney and then Misty. These funds have been flying, and the pre-market it looks like they were up, but you know there's a lot of volatility. So let me recoup what trades happened on Monday. Um, so in Coney, which maps to coin, uh, they dropped, let me show you in holdings, they dropped 175,000 shares. So people were selling out of this, likely chasing Misty, who knows, but it certainly could be because both these funds have done very, very well. Coney's near its all-time high. Misty is at its all-time high, although it didn't start until February 21. So let's talk about the trades that took place. So on the synthetic, they closed out uh, 415 positions, and I think they were at 14,760 or something. They already closed 440 and 545, so they closed out an additional 415. So what happens from an accounting standpoint, when people sell out of the fund, okay, they've got, they have a loss and they have to pay those shares. So they usually are forced to sell unless they're holding an immense amount of cash, then they sell some of their position. So they sold an equal amount of their, their 250 synthetic and they put on an additional March position um, of selling 415 weekly calls, okay? Or I should say buying back 415 of the 14,775 calls. So let me go over those. Let me start with the synthetics. So they closed out the synthetics. And by the way, these were in the money, right? Because the, the close yesterday was 279, so we were up over 250. So closing 415 positions, they sold the calls for 45.6, and they bought back the puts for $14.80. So that was a net of about 1.2 million in their favor. And overall, that leaves 14,360 um, contracts. And if they were to close those out just where they stand right now, and they don't expire until 419, right? So there's three weeks plus, and they would collect 43 million just from where they stand right now if they were able to close those out. So the puts would go worthless and the calls would gain a little more money because there'd be no time premium. Um, or actually, they would go down slightly. They'd only be 29, but we, we expect this to move a lot higher over time uh, in, in the crypto situation. So let's go to the March tab. So there was 1.2 million there. Let's take a look at what happened on the 25th. So we're showing 415, like I said, of the 14,775, they had sold these or opened them. So remember, these are naked calls, so they're selling them with the idea that it closes below their strike price. Well, they sold it at 267.50, right? With four trading days this week, and after the first trading day, you know, when they sold them, it was only a, a 4.69 buffer that they had. And now they're negative 4.37 because it was trading at, it closed at 277, 279. What was the number? Uh, 279. So on these marches, they lost money, right? So they lost 321,000 on this particular, just selling the 415. And so if this continues, they're gonna lose big on this weekly, okay? 
in a way, you almost want it to come back, stay stable, maybe finish up around 270 or something, and they can buy them back for three or four dollars on Thursday and not really lose much. You always like to make money, but if you're going to lose something, you don't lose big. I mean, if this thing runs up to, you know, 320, then it's going to cost them 25, 30 million dollars to, to buy those back and cut down on payoff money. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's look at the active tab. So on our active tab, with the loss or the selling of the 415 on the short-term strikes, um, which are now 4.37% out of the money, right? And you see this IV volatility, this 30-day volatility, 95.07. That tells you something about how volatile. So these fund managers probably know better than to sell a call only 4%, 4.6% out of the money with four days to go in, in a crypto-based, um, you know, Coinbase, and, and coin for Coinbase is the premier trading vehicle for Bitcoin and crypto. So here's our trending chart. Obviously, we don't trade. I mean, coin has been up, you know, look at this tear from early February. You see it in the volume. You see it in the price. We've moved up, certainly, but you're never going to do that. You're never going to track the underlying asset 100% because you get capped in situations. And they're capped right now, right? They've already run by that strike, so they can start to lose money, not make any more money on the strike. Okay, so we talked about the synthetics. 43 million, um, if they were to close out that position, and I suspect that's gonna be much higher. We may see a $400 coin um, underlying asset by the time they close that and the crypto. So our March profits are five million on the synthetic, or sorry, on, yes, this is the 250 synthetic. And we're already 11.88% above the synthetic. So you want everything above the synthetic. You, you get to keep all of the put money that you sold, right? So it's showing 1297. Well, if it were to close on 419 at 250 or above, this is zero, right? So we're not going to make as much money there, but if we run to 400, this value is going to be a minimum of 150, right? 400 minus 250. So when you start talking about those kind of numbers, we could make 100, 150 million over here on our synthetic at close time. They probably would roll it a week early if that was the situation and they might have a two or three dollar you know time premium left here but if it was up around 400 you know they could just capture that money a week before 419 and then sell a new strike price for a synthetic out right okay so let's take a look at our holdings so, oh, I didn't really cover the cash. So on our March tab, I talked to this. Let's look over here. So our cash is a negative or, or four million. Treasuries didn't change a lot. They went down, what, 270,000 there. They went down 30,000 there. Uh, the government substantially, they moved cash, right, because they, they had to pay the people to leave the fund. So they had a drain. We had a negative four million in total in the change from Friday to Monday, right? But let's see what the fund actually did. All right, let's go over here and look at this. So in the crypto world, on Monday, coin... The underlying asset went up 9.47%, right? And remember, the fund managers put a bet on them by putting on the 267.50, they got $7.75, but it was only 4.69% out of the money, right? Over four days, that's less than one point, you know, it's about 1.15 per day. That's pretty tight. And sure enough, 
it ran up 9%, it blew right through those 267s. So again, I'm kind of hoping that it settles back. Let's see. And, and coin did well, or Coney did well, 5%. You're never going to, sometimes you beat the fund, but it's usually when the fund's slightly down or only up a little bit because your weekly calls didn't run past any of your strikes, so you made money on those. In this case, we didn't make any money on the strike. We had to sell some and we lost money on them, and the rest of our batch of weeklies we lost money on. We made it on our synthetics. So we closed at 29.41, up 5%, and the underlying asset was up 9.5%. Okay, so let's look at our holdings before we do payments. So again, I mentioned the share count was 13,475,000. It dropped 175,000. Uh, we talked about cash. So here are the 14,360s, right? So this is our matching pair of the synthetic. Go right here. We'll put yellow on those guys. So our synthetics, all right, are making money for us. Those are moving up. Our, our, our puts are going down in value and our calls are going up, which is exactly what we want. The puts are liability. The most we can ever make is what we sold the put for, our initial premium, right? We just don't want it to be below 250, so we don't have to spend any money to buy the put back or cash settle. So on the call, if we run to 400, we're got a minimum of 150. If we ran to 400 a week before, you know, we would have this be 150 plus another week of time premium. It might be 180 or 190. So that's why they roll sometimes a week ahead of time because the put gets down here to two or three or four dollars and doesn't have much left. Depends on how far above the strike price we run. All right, let's take a look on the payments because, I mean, the pay, pay date is coming up. I think declaration is on 4-3 um, and our pay date isn't until 4-8 the following Monday. So we've got 88 million positive on our synthetic income. So that's where we buy the call, sell the put, roll those, right? We went out of our um, previous 200 synthetic and we've been living in the 250 synthetic, making money. Our short call is losing money, uh, but not a lot. So we've got a net income of 82.2 million and with the share count going down, going down in 175,000 from yesterday, we've got 619 total income per share that they could pay out on that. And we're losing 48 cents on the, uh, the uh, weeklies. So what are we gonna see for a distribution? It's a little early, but I think there's a strong inclination as much as I'd love to think that it's going to be three dollars, I'm guessing somewhere between two fifty and three. I don't think they'll hit the magic number of three. Now, it depends on how much we lose on these weeklies. If we lose up to twenty-five million on the weeklies, we could cut this down, right? This this number could become five or four point eight. So I think we're somewhere at 35 to 45 percent of this number 50 percent of the number right now as it stands would be three dollars and ten cents right so i don't think we're going to see that i think we're going to see maybe a new record for the fund um, i think it paid well here it paid 269 in december and i think there was a previous payment up around 255 I didn't track it back then. I've only been in the fund since uh, December. So I'm thinking high twos, mid twos certainly, if we continue like this. Okay, I went over the holdings. So what's the fair value? Uh, the actual close at 29.41, if you go through how much the assets are with the cash and the various treasury bill expirations and the 
and the synthetic and the weekly. We only have one weekly call, right? The 267 and our synthetic is one position. Um, so 29.42 is what the assets add up. So think you got a penny discount on, on buying the, the fund versus their asset value. Okay, let's move to Misty. Misty has just been killing it. Okay, let's go in. They also had several positions. Um, change they sold out of three positions okay on their synthetic and on their strike and for them let's go over here well let's talk about what happened yesterday look at this guys 21.86 percent micro strategy was killing it okay so big big up move uh, we got 13.75, we the fund owners, and I'm a fund owner loving this one, right? Again, we're not capped, we just can't have the same kind of move because there's some capping that goes on by setting these out. So we did get capped on the 1800, but look how much they went out. In some fairness, last Friday, they sold 1800 calls, they sold 21 at $46.65 and they sold 167 at $47.09. So 188 contracts of the 1800 and they went out 18.9% out of the money. And look what the fund did. It went from 1523 to 1856, right? So now this is in the money slightly. Not big, $50 on 1800, right? like two and a half percent three percent but still you know it, it's above you don't want it to be you want you don't want it to outrun the weekly strikes in this case it was only four days so maybe we'll get lucky and they won't lose money on it okay but the synthetic flies right let's go take a look at the synthetic so what they did across the board was they added two contracts so very minimum right they had new people coming into the fund so by the way when you now we've got to share our dividend and I don't know if this is really fair but it's just the way ETFs and funds work I, I wanted to share this with you guys so think about when we get over here to our payments right so I don't want to go through the income right now I'll do it in a minute but but as it stands, we have $11.08 to pay out just based on the synthetics, right? So, and you, have a, and you have more money in the short call. So if we took, they're not gonna pay you on the short, they're, and they're, they're not gonna pay you this full amount. Again, I think this is somewhere between 33 and 50, 33% and 50%. So again, we're not done, right? If we lose money and it keeps on running on these weeklies and then we make money on the synthetics, those wash out so we don't gain any income, right? And the synthetics don't quite move as fast as the short-term calls because they have more time involved. So anyway, what I was gonna say is this is coming up, but it's a little early to guess. My guess is four to five dollars right now. It could go up more. Uh, this will be their first payment, so we're going to see if they set a precedent. But the fund's been killing it. So I used the Misty price, 1108. They're not going to pay all that out. That would be a yield of 306 percent if you bought it at 43.34. So what I was saying that doesn't seem fair, our share count's going up, right? Even on the days when crypto goes down and MicroStrategy goes down, nobody's really selling Misty because it's so far up, right? But there could be a lot of people that flock into it just to collect the dividend. Now, it likely will go down if it doesn't keep performing, right? But 
I don't know that that's a good play. I don't have a lot of thoughts on that. I own plenty right now, so I'm happy to collect on that. Coney and Misty are my two uh, yield max funds. Uh, all right, let me go back to the 1700s. We talked about this. So, so they sold two, and then they added two on the weeklies. And I'll go right. So what they did was they sold, or sorry, they bought two. They didn't have to liquidate to pay people, so this wasn't closing. So they went from 188 contracts to 190. But look what they have to pay, right? They want to stick at this 1700. Well, they bought it during the day, so most of the day MSTR was above 1800. So they had to pay $339.96 for a 1700 strike. So that's a big premium, but let's say it was 1840. Well, you would have had $140 alone. Now you had to buy the 419 time premium. So that's why it's a big number. And when you sell the put, when you're at 1850 and you're selling a 17 put, they're not going to give you the kind of money as if you were at the money, right? So we only got 193. So what I'm trying to say is that was only two contracts, but it's not quite double. But look at that. 638 to 67, double would have been 76, but they have to pay 1.8 times or something what they can sell the, the calls for by sticking to this 1700 synthetic. But they have to deploy the money, well they don't have to, but they want to actively produce income. And on the synthetic they'll likely make a lot of money on this synthetic because with the having coming up and other things is very likely going to continue moving up. All right, so let's look at the March tab. I talked to you about up 21, up 13, what the numbers were for each. Here's the two contracts. So look what they did though. They didn't want to mess around with 1800s, right? We're already 1856. They went out to 2130 strike price. 14.76% out of the money, above what the stock was trading at, right? And that's based on the close. They could have done this when it was 1810 or something, you know. You don't get the time of day that, that they sold it. But they got $34.25, so the stock has to be above. Now, it's only two contracts. So if we get killed on the 1800s and it closes at 1900, we're going to keep all this premium, but it's a small amount of money, right? It's, it's $6,850, right? We could lose a million dollars. We could lose a lot more if this thing keeps on going, right? Because that's just what we were credited with, right? It would need to be below these numbers to keep these numbers, you know, even. But if it runs to 19 or 2,000, we're going to spend a lot of money. We could spend $25 million to, to buy these guys back. And we don't want that. We, we want to keep that big cash kitty here uh, in the payments alive for a big payout. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, I didn't talk about active here. So in 1856, here's our allocation, right? We got 188 contracts, right? And we're 3.02 out of the money, right? Because these were 17 or uh, 1800s, and the stock is 1856. Let's look at these up here. Now these expire in two more days, guys. So three minus 3.02. So we're we're already at 1856. So we're above that. We want those to settle back down so we don't lose that money. And on the new ones, I mean, we can get $7 a share based on the outstanding shares, but that's not a lot of money. It's two contracts, right? So what I did here is, is you see this every week. We've got earnings coming up, but here we are just starting to get closer to April. We, don't, we have to 5-6 after the market. We have the halving on 419, 416 estimate. So I'm very bullish. Most people are bullish, but... It's crypto based and it's going to have a lot of volatility, which can be good for us also. 
but not for the faint of heart. So here's a chart. I tend to update these. We're actually doing pretty well. Now this is a new fund, right? So we didn't start till February 21, but you know, we've held probably closer than the Coney has to coin. Uh, so we're trending pretty well. And again, I think I pointed this out last time. Look at this, this volume here. And the volume is around uh, MSTR. The volume, I, I do the chart and then I do a comparison on the second one. But it picks up the volume on, on the, uh, the uh, MSTR. Okay. So let's, we talked about, yeah, I didn't go into detail on the payment. So let me do that again now. So our synthetic is pretty much stayed the same, 8.9 million. We've got another 1 million. So we've got 9.9, .9, close to 10 million in total income. So we're positive on our synthetic, although we could lose our butt this week. Okay. Our shares went up, right, 75,000 shares. So that takes this down a little bit, right? Because you have more people to distribute that money. So when I was saying it doesn't seem fair, I guess it's fair because in order to get that, they've got to go in and pay 40 something dollars, right? So people that bought it at 20 are going to get these big payouts. And if you want a big payout and it sustains through the end of the month, then you've got to pay up now, okay. So let's look at the holdings. Oops, I didn't go through cash. So we talked about the one, two contracts put on. Um, our cash went up. Uh, it actually went up three million. Okay, because in our case, we didn't sell any synthetic like Coney did. Right, we just bought two more contracts and it cost us more money, so we used some of that cash. Um, but we went up in net assets because the value of our synthetics went up a lot. So on the holdings, we didn't change a lot. They don't have the government fund anymore on Misty, but they still do on Coney, the, um, <coughs> what's the name of, First American on the uh, government uh, bond fund that pays interest. So what do we have left? We have these 270 synthetics, right? Or 70, 1700 synthetics. Those are making money for us, right? As we move up into 19, 2000 and run higher, this, this uh, put price is just gonna decline. We've got about three and a half weeks to 419s of the dates. So we're making money on those guys. Where we stand to lose the money is right here. We're almost 7% um, behind, right? And these were just put on. Uh, these are the 2130s, right? So we should make money on those, but with $6,800 or something, you know, we'll take it. But it's not huge, and 75,000 shares were added. So look at this. The, fund, Misty is selling for a $9 premium over what the assets constitute its value at. So nothing huge there. Okay, guys, hopefully that helps. Let's stay positive. I never want, you know, Mr. to really drop, but I wouldn't mind this week if it closed right at 1800 So we didn't make, well, at 1800 we'd make a little bit because we sold those um, 1800s for some money, right? When we sold those, whoops, we sold those for 46 and 47. So even if we're 1800 to 1820 here and we wait to buy them back at the very end on Thursday, we're going to make a little bit of money. I just don't want to lose a lot of money, right? I could even assume we go to these 1850 we'd lose probably less than a million dollars. But anything 1900 would kill us, right? 1950, we start losing 25, 30 million dollars. You don't want that to happen. So that's why they talk about things get capped. Okay, guys, uh, that's all I got. Uh, hopefully you watched yesterday. I talked to about some bear market, uh, bear synthetic, short stock synthetics.
um, and let's see if those are forthcoming from Eomax. And just leave me comments. Again, I'm not a professional financial person. This is not financial advice. This is for fun and education. So like and subscribe and comment or ask any question. Thanks again, guys. Bye for now.